Hey everybody, um, welcome to Make Work Easy with Lean Manufacturing. Um, just going to start it off, what is lean? Um, basically what lean is, is it's uh, removing waste through continuous improvement. And so when we say continuous improvement, we mean uh, the it's basically the ongoing improvement of processes, products, or services that you might have in, in a business. Basically what that means is fix what bugs you. And that means all employees at all levels are every day fixing things that bug them. Um, and, you know, I think the, the, the issue with things like this that, uh, that claim to increase efficiency, increase output, things like that, um, you know, a lot of workers just think, oh, well, that's just going to make me work harder. It's going to just make my life way more difficult. Um, and really, it's, it's not about working fast. It's about working, you know, the exact same pace um, that you've always worked. It's just about making that work process smooth, easy, and um, repeatable. So um, Lean started as the Toyota production system um, from 48 to seven, 1948 to 75. Um, and lean manufacturing is really what makes Toyota's cars so reliable, is the fact that they're doing this continuous improvement um, all the time, and, and they, they employ a lot of the principles that we're going to talk about today. So um, I think a really good example of, of um, lean manufacturing in action is the uh, Numi Automotive plant. And um, basically, the Numi Automotive plant was a joint venture between Toyota and GM. Um, Basically, GM wanted to learn about lean manufacturing, and Toyota wanted to learn what it was like to uh, manufacture cars in America. So, <laughs> GM, they gave them um, the worst car plant that they had with the worst workers. Um, it was um, the uh, Fremont plant uh, in Fremont, California, and um, you know, it was just like, the, the workers would like sabotage the production line. They would throw Coke bottles in the doors so that um, so that the cars would rattle when they came off the line, and and then they'd have to um, then management would have to hire them for overtime to take the car apart to fix it, and um, you know people are just slacking off. Like in the morning, sometimes there wouldn't be enough workers to start the production line and so they would just go to the bar nearby and ask anybody there if they wanted to come work um but so then toyota took it over um and you know gm was like okay good luck um and toyota they they just tried to build quality into the process so um what gm was all about was just like just push it through you know, don't ever stop the line. Um, if there's problems, we'll get to it at the end. We'll take the car apart just so that we can tighten down these two bolts. And, um, you know, we're just looking for output. Um, and the other thing, too, is that because, you know, GM, they really didn't respect their workers at all. And so as a result, the workers would pile up grievances against management Um just to kind of slow things down and um, you know they just they just kind of had a bone to pick with them because the managers were such jerks and um, a, a pretty big tenet of lean manufacturing is, is having respect for your workers and empowering them um, giving them the ability to have some uh, autonomy um, with their improvements and so that was you know one of the big things that Toyota did was you know, they said, hey, we trust you guys to, to make this plant as good as it can be. So, like, let's, you know, together, let's figure out how to improve all of our processes so that, um, so that we can all um, succeed together. And the other thing, too, that they did was they reduced inventory. So um, they just figured out ways to, um, to not produce all of these cars and all these parts that were that were not needed, um, and they went from 
one of the worst plants in America to one of the best plants under lean manufacturing. So, um, of course, one of the biggest things that I've heard in um, implementing lean manufacturing is, is, oh, well, but we're not manufacturing. This is not a car plant. Um, and I, I've seen lean be used um, at any workplace, hospitals, farms, construction sites, they all use lean. Um, and, you know, basically if you have standard repeatable processes, then lean manufacturing is something that you can use. Um, you know, you kind of have to tailor it a bit for, for the job at hand, but um, all the core ideas involved can be can be utilized for film production. Um, and and I, I've definitely noticed that some lean ideas are in place now in film production. Um, I think like a, a tungsten cart is a, a pretty solid example. Just, you know, they, they have some, some simple things there where they have all the accessories needed for all the lights are on one cart, you know, so if you push it anywhere, it's you have everything that you need. Um, and then just like another example is uh, like the, the fact that we color code um, stage packages, truck packages, things like that, um, just making it easier to, to um, know what gear goes where. Um, and so these are just, you know, these are improvements that somebody made at some point and it, it caught on. Um, and so, you know, if you can imagine that all of these improvements piling up on top of each other, it's going to make things a lot better over time. Um, so I, I do have to like kind of give a, a disclaimer with with this presentation um, because there is a way that that lean really does work best, and and that's if you have lean manufacturing happening from the top down with key financial people involved. Um, you know, having all these people improve processes and stuff. Um, some people might see that as you know people goofing off or you know not focusing on what their real work is which is you know doing you know making a movie um and so it is um it really does work best if you you know if the people at the top understand what you're doing and are supporting you in doing it um and then also if you have every single employee involved um also if you have daily morning meetings where you know you spend a bit of time talking about previous improvements that were made and then um, also use um, use that time to focus on training and education um, you'll really see as we go throughout this that um, you know training and education is kind of a, a big part of it so that so that you get you know everybody in the business to be thinking lean and um, you know, and, and trying to improve the processes that apply to them. Um, it's totally, totally still possible without this. It's just a lot harder. Um, it's, you know, not impossible. It's all this stuff is still totally going to be um, applicable. Um, but, you know, basically the goal is to get, get to this. So, um, and, you know, I, I think the, the thing that I've heard in, in people who are they're working in companies or businesses that, you know, they really want lean to take hold, um, you know, you just have to focus on what you can control directly. And when you start to do that and people start to see, hey, like, whatever this guy's doing is, like, really working. Like, they're, you know, they've really improved all of these key metrics or something. And, um, uh you know, maybe we should talk to them and figure out what they're doing. And, you know, maybe you can start to to get it to grow outwards a little bit. And, and you know, next thing you know, everybody's interested in what you're doing. So, so um, I really love this cartoon. It's, um, you know, these guys, are they're trying their best with their square wheels. This guy has a, a really solid improvement. Um, but, you know, they're, they're too busy. So... Um, basically, um, ninety percent of everything you do is is waste. Um, so, 
you know, continuous improvement is just about removing waste from your processes. So um, just know that the improvements are endless. Um, you're never going to finish improving. Um, and if, you know, if, if you just focus like every day, you just try and make small improvements, um, those small improvements are really going to add up. Um, the good thing too about trying to make small improvements are um, the fact that if you if you end up failing with your improvement, um, which which you will, I, I would say you know fifty percent of improvements fail. Um, if you fail with it, it's not a big deal. It took you like you know five ten minutes. You know it wasn't this like week long thing that you worked on and you know you got to the end of it and you're like oh my gosh this is kind of dumb and you know painful I'm gonna go back to how we were originally gonna do it um, you know it's it wasn't that it was just a five to ten minute thing and you know it's it's not a big deal um, and so you know what I think the best way to make improvements are is as you go throughout your day you just kind of figure out what bugs you and when you find something that bugs you just write it down um, as soon as you, you know, as soon as you run into that issue. Um, and that's just like any struggle at all. Um, it could be the, the simplest thing. I'll, I'm about to show you some examples soon. and I think you'll laugh at, at how small the, the thing that bugs you could be. Um, but yeah, so 50% of improvements fail. But, you know, it, it's really okay if you fail. And I, I think that that's a, a really good part of the process just because, um, you know, learning is important. And if, you know, it's just like you're never going to get to the, the best way, or I shouldn't even say the best way to do that process because there is no best way. You're just figuring out the current best way to do it. Um, and, you know, it's just like as long as you fail, it's great. You learn something. Now, how can you teach others that and how can you apply that? to your process improvement now. Um, and so, yeah, basically with continuous improvement, you wanna remove the non-value added steps. Um, and a good way to think about um, non-value added is like, just ask, ask yourself like, would somebody pay for what I'm doing right, pay me for what I'm doing right now? Um, and so like, you know, if, let's take that to um, you know, making a movie, um, you know, would you, you know, would you pay for a grip looking for a Cardellini? You know, probably not, you know, you just, it's like, okay, why do I have to pay for, to, to look for something? Um, but, you know, maybe an electric turning on a backlight, you know, to have that nice backlight in the scene adds to the story a little bit. It makes the shot, you know, fit with the look of the movie, you know, that's something that I would pay for, absolutely. So, um, as you're making these improvements, um, it's really important to, to document them. Um, just because, uh, you know, lean is, lean is less about the tools and more about the culture. Um, so, getting other people excited about improving and showing how you've improved something maybe could give them ideas of how they could improve their workspace um, or maybe one of their processes. Um, you know, it's like it might not even be directly applicable, but, um, you know, it's like if, if you're sharing, um, you know, basically if you take before and after pictures um, or even you make, you know, a little video of, of what you've done and you show that around to people, you know, maybe post it on Facebook, something like that, um, you can, you know, you can get other people excited about improving and, um, and, you know, just, just get them, uh, get them to do the same thing back because, you know, now you have, uh, two people working on a problem rather than just yourself. So yeah, and just share them around. So, um, I have this video here that um, it's kind of funny, we're very meta right now, I'm watching a YouTube video on YouTube.
So basically, um, this is a video of how we how we used to prep our trucks. Um, so um, this rigging crate, it would go on all of our trucks, and we, um, you know, we would just we would go through it, count it every time, and we'd have to make sure that the same things were um, were in this crate every single time. And so we had this milk crate liner because you know we didn't we have all these like little pins and stuff um, that fell through, so you know we just wanted to keep keep them from falling through the bottom. And we had this bag um, so that we could. Um, just keep something for all these small pins and um, we would zip tie the bag closed just so that we would know if somebody opened it or not and uh, see if we had to check it actually so this would take about a minute and a half and, and this is really like best case scenario um, just because Matt who's doing this uh, video right now he really uh, he knows the list by heart um, so, you know, we tried to improve this process a little bit, you know, using our milk crate dividers. Um, and then we used the milk crate, one of our milk crate liners down below. Um, we kept the bag, but this is good because, you know, there was a, definitely a, a non-value added step where he had to dump the crate out um, just so that he could like count everything. And in this, he doesn't really have to dump the crate out anymore. Um, we're still doing the bag and everything. Um, but, you know, it's just like, there's a little bit less work, so a minute and 20 seconds. So then um, we went to this system where we just made foam um, cutouts for each piece of gear. Um, and this method, you know, it's like you just have to look for empty spaces. That's it. Um, and so we removed a lot of the non value added steps. You know, I'd say that, that counting the equipment is value added. You know, it's like at this point, the only non-value added step is pulling out the, um, um, pulling out each drawer. So I think that that is um, really good. You know, I think that that's like a, a video that is um, far and above what is necessary. And I think this next improvement really shows you, um, like as simple as it could be you know so this is what bugs him is getting this dustpan on this screw is like kind of hard so instead we just did magnets tape some magnets up there you know and this is an improvement it took five minutes ten minutes maybe and um you know it's super simple um oops sorry let's see so, yeah, um, that's it for now. We'll start with uh, the eight wastes in the next video.